welcome to Polish with Ray. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of Zoya's most popular best-selling creams. Before we get into the polishes, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed, I'm hoping you'll consider it. I upload new live swatching videos with upcoming releases, favorites videos, seasonal racks, live streams, lots of fun stuff every single week. So if you've ever shopped at Zoya before, you probably already know they have a huge selection of polishes. I believe on their site it says they have over 400 colors, but when you visit their site, like at the time I'm recording this video, and you say shop all, it says they have almost 700 polishes available. Like that's a lot of polish. So whether you're just starting out your Zoya collection or if you're looking to expand it, I'm hoping you'll find some polishes here that pique your interest. I believe if you visit the Zoya site, they do their best sellers list a little bit differently now, but at the time of planning this video, they had on their site like a more concrete list of 30 of their best selling nail polishes of all time. So out of Zoya's 30 best-selling nail polishes, about 15, half of them were cream and the other half were specialty finishes. Because there were 30 polishes and I wanted to do a super thorough review, I split it into two parts. This is the cream half of the video and part two, the specialty finishes will come very soon. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on it. A few disclaimers, if you love any of these, I would wait for one of Zoya's massive sales. They do them pretty frequently. Full price, each of these polishes I'm sharing with you today retails for $12, plus if you use the Z-Wide brush, which is what I show in the video, it's $14, because those are $2 a pop. But every few months on the Zoya site, they'll do a buy one, get one free sale, or the polishes are marked down to half price. Quite a few of the polishes are available at a discounted price right now on Beyond Polish. And if you use my affiliate code on the screen, then you will also save 10% on your entire order. I'll leave details for that down in the description box. All right, we have 15 beautiful cream shades to look at today. Let's go ahead and get into the swatches. I did want to really quickly throw in a comparison of the two brushes that Zoya offers. On the right is the original Zoya brush that comes with all of the bottles of polish when you purchase them. And then on the left is the Z wide brush. The Z wide brush is an additional $2, but in my opinion, it is so, so worth it. It just makes all of the creams I'm gonna show you in today's video apply so smoothly because it's nice and wide and it's got that beautiful curved tip, so it really fits well into your cuticle. So I'm swatching these in no particular order. I just tried to group them together by color. We're starting off with a few blues and this one is called blue. <laughs> what a creative name. It's described as being a full coverage, soft and delicate pale baby blue with a glossy cream finish. So they weren't kidding when they called this a pale baby blue. It is the softest, lightest blue you can imagine. It's almost a white with just a few drops of blue in there. And it doesn't necessarily lean purple. It's more of a green leaning blue. It's not green at all. It's definitely a blue, but it's got slightly a little bit of an aqua look to it. I was completely floored with the opacity for this one. It was smooth, buttery, very full coverage on that first coat, which is so impressive for a shade this light. You can see it does get a little bit streaky if you overwork it, but I was able to reach full opacity in two coats, and I think most people will be good in two. It does dry down to a beautiful glossy finish, but I always finish my polishes with a glossy top coat just to prevent chipping and help them shine and look beautiful for a long time. Here's what this one looks like built up in two coats. It's so soft and delicate, very fresh, springy, and classy. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. Beautiful formula, especially for a shade this light. Soya has another blue cream in their top 30 list, and it is Sailor. It's described as being a classic dark navy cream. So I don't know if I just agree with that description. I definitely agree it belongs in the navy family, but I don't think it's a dark navy. I think it's a light navy. <laughs> Fine difference, but still a difference. So some navies that I have in my collection are so deep and dark that in certain lightings, they almost appear to be black. This one is obviously blue at least to me, in every lighting situation. So I would either say it's a light navy or a super dark denim blue. 
On the nail, I felt like Sailor had more of a Crelly formula than a cream formula, which is what the description states. But you can totally tell a difference application-wise between Blue, which was very opaque on that first coat, and Sailor, which we're looking at now, which shows a lot of nail line on that first coat. I did get great coverage in two coats, but this is a polish where I can see if you've got nails longer than mine, you might need three for it. It did have a smooth, beautiful formula, very self-leveling, not runny or thin, really easy to apply. So here's what Sailor looks like built up in two coats with a glossy top coat and some sunlight. Super flattering shade, kind of has a vintage feel. Definitely recommend. Moving on to the neutrals in Zoya's top 30. This one is called Kelly, and it's described as being a rich gray shade with cool undertones. So on the Zoya side, Kelly looks to be purple. And a lot of people commented, I bought this thinking it's a purple, but it's not a purple, but I still love it. <laughs> um, yeah, the picture totally looks purple, but it's definitely like a mid-toned, kind of almost charcoal gray cream. Based on the pictures I've seen of this polish and the reviews, I'll say that this one definitely plays against your skin tone. The tone of your skin is going to have a big impact on how this one looks on you. A lot of reviewers said it pulled more blue on them, but I felt like it pulled a little yellow green on me, but that could be because I have very warm undertones. On application, this one also had a curly base, but it was incredible to work with. Look how crazy smooth it is on application. I was blown away. I've actually worn this a few times. I really enjoy it. On two coats, I got full opacity, and even though this has a curly base, I think that this would be a two-coater for most people. So here's what Kelly looks like built up in two coats in the sunlight, and it's just the perfect mid-toned gray, a really modern neutral, super beautiful. Definitely recommend this one too. Continuing with our grays, up next is Zoya Dove, which is described as being a soft, delicate, light neutral gray with an opaque, glossy cream finish. So this shade is super popular. I mean, I guess all of these shades are technically super popular or they wouldn't be on this list. Um, but this one I know, at least around people that I'm familiar with, I hear this one talked about quite often and for good reason. It's such a beautiful, soft, light gray. It is picking up just a little bit lighter on camera than it is in real life, but I will say this is one of those shades kind of like blue that is like very strongly white based with just a few drops of gray in it. On application, this one does have a creamier formula, kind of like blue, a little bit jelly, but mostly cream. You can see I've got pretty great opacity on that first coat very little patchiness as well. And then in two coats, I did reach full opacity. I think two coats would be good for just about every nail length for this color. And again, I am just so impressed that a shade this light can apply this smoothly. And I do feel like the Z wide brush definitely helps a lot with this. With the skinny brush, this one might be a three coater, but the Z wide brush really does help spread out the polish evenly on the nail. So here's what Dove looks like built up in two coats in some sunlight. You can see it's got a smooth, even coverage, zero patchiness, super flattering shade, and very sleek, super modern and sleek. Up next is another neutral. This one is called Jack, and it's described as being a full coverage nude cream. So this one, maybe I've been living under a rock, but I hadn't heard much about it. I was kind of surprised to see it on this list, but I'm so glad it ended up here. You'll have to let me know in the comments if this is a Zoya you've heard about before or if it's one you have and already love. So I know nude doesn't provide much description. So if I had to describe this shade, I would call it a tan cream. It's very light in color. It has some brown in it, but it has a lot of warm undertones, some peach and some yellow. As you can see, Jack had a super creamy formula, I think with very steady coverage. This one could be a two coater. I did have just a little bit of nail peeking through though, a little bit of patchiness on that second coat. So I did decide to go in for a third and reached full opacity. So I would say for most people, this one's going to be a two to three coater. Check out that color. It's 
gorgeous, totally like a warm, sandy tan, just beautiful. So here's what Jack looks like built up in three coats and some sunlight. I apologize for the different nail shape here. This was taken earlier this year, but as you can see, super flattering color. I really love how this looked on my skin tone. I think if you also have a medium skin tone, this might be a nude you wanna try. Up next is Rue, which is described as being a full coverage boudoir blush cream shade. Definitely agree with that description. It is a soft blush color. It actually has quite a bit of brown undertones, which puts it not that far off from Jack. They're actually closer than I would have thought. So after I swatch one more, maybe two more pink creams in the same kind of color family, I'm going to throw in a comparison so you can see which you like best. Um, but this is an absolutely more dusty beautiful light pink as this one went on I noticed it had just the slightest curly lean to it you can see just a little bit of my nail peeking through but I did get it fully opaque in just two coats and I think most people would be able to even those with longer nails than me so here's what it looks like built up in two coats such a gorgeous flattering shade this is another one i was just not expecting to be a fan of but i'm so in love with it i think it would flatter both people with warm undertones as well as cool up next is another beautiful pink this one's called mia and it's described as being a very soft muted dusty nude mauve pink and a glossy cream finish so mia was one of the first soyas i ever purchased it holds a special place in my heart and if you don't have it yet i think it's going to hold a special place in your heart as soon as you see the application <laughs> that's why i fell in love with this shade this one had a little bit of a curly lean to it too, but you can see the opacity is fantastic on that first coat, especially for a shade this light. Zoya just impresses me so much with how well they do these lighter, soft colors. The formula is beautiful. So this one did reach full opacity for me in two coats, and I think most people would be good for this one in two. Here's Mia built up in two coats and some lower outdoor lighting. Is this the most unique shade ever? Definitely not, but it is done very well. So if you're a fan of light, soft, mauve rosy pinks, this one's gonna be for you. One more pink to look at before we check out that comparison. This one's called Madeline, and it's described as being a full coverage muted rose cream shade. So this one, definitely agree with that description. It's a beautiful, dusty rose. It's kind of got a little bit of mauve in it, a little bit of brown in there. Very, very universally flattering. Again, that's probably how it ended up on this list. <laughs> On application, Madeline had a beautiful, smooth, creamy formula. Look at that coverage. It's basically a one coater. I did go in for two coats and would advise most people to do that, but you could probably get away with one coat if you were in a super hurry with this one. Such a pretty shade. So here's Madeline built up in two coats with a glossy top coat and some sunlight. Just wow. <laughs> I love this shade. It's perfect any time of year, but I really love it for fall. All right, so since those last four I showed you were kind of close, I did want to show you a comparison. So from left to right, we have Madeline, then we have Mia, then Rue, then on the far right is Jack. As you can see, Jack looks kind of like a tan shade compared to the others, and Rue looks like a pinky version, in my opinion, of Jack. Mia kind of stands out as the more bright shade, and then Madeline looks much more berry next to Mia. This next one I'm really excited for, it's called Jordan, and it's described as being a soft blossom pink cream. I'm not sure what that description means, but if I had to describe this, I would call it a soft bubblegum pink. It's so different from the other pinks I've shown you so far because it's just bright, it's fresh, it's energetic. To me, this is the perfect shade for like springtime or early summer. I love this shade. On application, Jordan definitely had a creamy formula. You can see a little bit of my nail peeking through, but it's 
quite opaque for a shade this light. Once again, I've said that so many times because Zoya does these lighter shades so well. Um, this one's going to be between two to three coats, depending on how you apply it and um, depending on your nail length. If you've got the skinny Zoya brush, I think it'll need to be a three coater. If you've got the Z wide brush with careful application, I think it could be a two coater, but I did go in for three just to reach full opacity and absolutely loved the end result. So here's Jordan and three coats in the sunlight. For me, this polish was an instant mood booster. If you're a pink lover, get your hands on the shade. I think you're going to love it. Now we're getting into some deeper, darker vampire shades. This one's called Joni, and it's described as being a deep, dusty plum cream. So this one's definitely in the purple family. I think plum is the right place to put it. It does have a dustier, muted quality, and it also has a lot of brown undertones. Joni went on beautifully. It definitely had a more creamy base and was super smooth and easy to work with, very self-leveling. I did find that the polish ran down the brush just a little bit, so it was on the thin side, but just make sure you don't have too much on your brush and that shouldn't be a problem. I reached full opacity with this one in just two coats. Here's Joni built up in two coats with glossy top coat outside in the sunshine. Ah, just such a gorgeous shade. Another one that's perfect for fall. We have another plum in this lineup. That is Tara, and Tara is described as being a purple plum with a balanced tone between red and purple. This one's deeply saturated and a very full coverage cream. So these two plums that we just looked at are very different. I am going to throw in another comparison so you can check them out side by side after the next polish. Um, but basically, Tara is a whole lot vampier than Joni. Joni is kind of like a dusty plum, whereas Tara is a vampy, deep, dark plum. It's coming off a little magenta in the bottle here, but you'll see on the nails. It's quite dark and rich. So Tara had a beautiful formula. It was super smooth and easy to work with. In my opinion, it leaned a little bit crelly. I do feel like you could leave this in one coat, but at two coat, it deepened up significantly. So I would recommend two coats for this one. I don't think anyone will need more than that. So here's Tara built up in two coats with a glossy top coat and some lower outdoor lighting. Just sophistication in a bottle very elegant and classy perfect for fall even more perfect for winter next up is my namesake shade woo we've got soya rachel and it's described as being a full coverage mulberry berry cream so this polish is one of those polishes you look at it in certain lighting it looks more red you look at it in others it looks more purple i think you'll find beside tara it looks more red and beside some of the reds i'm about to show you it looks more purple. Um, either way, it's deliciously deep and vampy, super dark, and another one that I just love wearing in the wintertime. On the nail, Rachel had more of a crelly leaning formula, as a lot of these red leaning shades tend to do. Um, it was very easy to work with, a little on the thin side, so it did run down my brush some. Just make sure, again, you don't have too much polish on your brush, and it won't be a problem. I did reach full opacity with this one in two coats, and I think two coats would suit most. Here's two coats of Rachel with a glossy top coat. My goodness, what an empowering shade. Wearing this on my nails makes me feel like I can do literally anything. <laughs> um, I actually wore this as a pedicure most of winter last year and just absolutely adored it. So here are those last three side by side. I actually think that Rachel, Tara, and Joni would make a gorgeous Skittle Manny or maybe like some gradient nail art because they look so pretty together. Tara is very rich and mid-toned. Joni is a little bit on the dustier side compared to the other two. And Rachel, of course, is deep, vampy, and leans a little bit more red. And then Zoya did have a few reds on their top 30 list. This one is called Courtney, and it's described as being a deep red beetroot shade with a full coverage smooth application. This one is also claiming to be a one coater, but we'll see about that. <laughs> um, and I feel like, disclaimer here, I think this one is coming off a little bit bright on camera. In person, it is a red with a lot of brown in it. It's kind of more muted and almost like what I would call a brick red. 
So Courtney applied like a one coater on the first coat. You couldn't see any visible nail line and it was super smooth and easy to work with. Very self leveling. However, on that first coat, it was a little bit brighter than it was on the bottle. So for the purpose of getting it to the color that you see now, <laughs> I did add a second coat and that deepened the base color significantly. This is another one that if you're a seasonal polish wear, I think would be perfect for the cooler months. And here's Courtney built up in two coats with a glossy top coat and some sunlight. In bright lighting, you get to see a brighter red. And then when you take this one into lower lighting, it does appear a bit deeper. And there's one more vampy shade in this list. It's Dakota, and Dakota is described as being a dramatic dark cherry cream with a very subtle hint of brown. Why did this polish being described as dramatic make me like it even more? <laughs> um, definitely agree with this description. Again, this one's coming off a little bit brighter on camera than it is in person, but you'll see its true color when it's built up on the nail and in the comparison I'm going to show you. So this one is very close to the one we just looked at. I don't know that you would necessarily need both, but this one leans just a little bit more purple and has a different formula. So as you can see, this one is quite opaque on that first coat too. We don't get a lot of nail line, but this one is definitely a jelly. On that first coat, it's really bright and it deepens with each and every coat you add. I got this fully opaque and to a depth of color I was happy with in three coats. You can see just how dark it is on that third coat, um, but maybe some people could get away with two. Here's what Dakota looks like built up in three coats with a glossy top coat and some sunlight. If you're patient enough to build it up to three coats, I think this one is absolutely worth it and totally deserves to be on this list. So here are those last three side by side. As you can see, Rachel looks purple beside Courtney and Dakota. It's also the deepest of the three. Courtney looks brightest compared to Rachel and Dakota. And then Dakota leans a little bit more brown than Courtney does. I would say those two are pretty close actually, um, but Courtney was a two coater and Dakota definitely needs to be a three coater. You can see some patchiness on the nail there. That's because I only built it up to two coats. And the final cream shade on this list is Sonia. Sonia is described as being a summery crimson red cream. This was the shade I was most excited to see on this list because not that I didn't love all of the shades on this list, um, but this one to me was the most completely different. We had a lot of neutrals. We had a lot of just in general, very likable, agreeable shades. So it was really fun to see something this bright on this list. And if I didn't love the shade in the bottle, I loved it on my nails. This one was nearly a one coater. I think I could have done one in and out the door with this one, seriously. I did go in for a second coat just to add a little extra plumpness to the nail, but it was fully opaque on that first coat and it applied like a dream. Absolutely gorgeous. I would say the color for this one is almost borderline neon reddish coral. I feel like it has just a whisper of orange in it. Oh, it's beautiful. So here's what Sonia looks like built up in two coats with a glossy top coat and the beautiful summer sunshine. This shade rocked my world this summer. When I swatched this in this video, I didn't take this off my nails for several days. I was completely in love. <laughs> So when I do videos that feature so many shades like this one, I do like to do one final recap at the end, just so we can remember what we fell in love with in the video. So let's take a look at these polishes one more time. That light baby blue in the center is blue. The navy blue is called Sailor. The dark gray is called Kelly. The lighter gray beside it is called Dove. The tan is called Jack. The first pinky leaning shade is Rue. In the center now is Mia. The more mauvey berry shade is Madeline. That bright bubblegum pink is Jordan. Beside Jordan is Joni. That first deep shade is Tara, leans a little bit more purple. The more red, deeper shade beside it is Rachel. 
That first red is Courtney. Beside it is Dakota, just slightly deeper. And then there at the end is Sonia. So those are Zoya's best-selling cream shades. Were you surprised to see any of these on this list? I was surprised to see a few. All right, and if you don't already have a list going, let me tell you which I think you should grab. One of my top picks was Rue. I was actually very surprised that I like this one as much as I did. I usually gravitate towards colors that are brighter, which you'll see in a second, uh, but this one was just a super flattering shade of pink. I think a lot of people would look beautiful with this on. Another favorite of mine was Dove. I just love the softness of this gray. It's light and refreshing and just the perfect palette cleanser. My next pick, you probably already guessed, Rachel. <laughs> How could I not pick my namesake shade? I probably would have picked it even if it wasn't the prettiest color, but luckily it is. I really enjoy this shade. But my absolute favorite out of the 15 and the one I was kind of most surprised to see in this group of most popular shades was Sonia. Oh my goodness. I loved this one on me. The formula was perfect. And again, I was just so surprised to see it mixed in with all of those gorgeous vampy shades and neutrals. To me, this was 100% a standout. So let me know in the comments if you already have any of these shades or if you think you'll be grabbing them or were there any polishes that you love from Zoya that you think should have made it on this list? Like I said, stay tuned for the best-selling specialty finish polishes from Zoya. We have shivers, we've got holographic flakies, so many pretties. I hope this video was helpful for you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!